my name is Jessica. I will be reciting The Gates to Freedom by Angela Davis, which was on June 9, 1972. It has been said many times that one can learn a great deal about society by looking forward its prisons. Look towards its dungeons and there you will see in concentrated and microcosmic form the sickness of the entire system. And today there is something that is particular revealing about the analogy between the prison and the large society of which it is a reflection. For in painfully real sense, we are all the prisoners of the, a society whom bombastics proclamations of freedom and justice for all are nothing but meaningless rhetoric. In this society today, we are surrounded by the very wealthy and the scientific achievements which hold the promise of freedom. Freedom is so near, yet at the same time it's so far away. And this though invokes in me the same sensation I felt as I reflected in my own conditions in jail for from my cell. I could look down upon the crowded streets of Bridgewood Village, almost tasting the freedom of movements, the freedom of space, which I had been taken from me, and all my sisters in captivity. Our condition here and now, the condition of all of us who are brown and black and working women and men, there is a very striking similarity to the conditions of the prisoners, the wealthy. And the technology around us tells us that a free, humane, harmonious society lies very near. But at the very same time, it's so far away because someone is holding the keys and that someone refuses to open the gates to freedom. Like the prisoners, we are locked up with the ugliness of racism and poverty and war and all the attended mental frustrations and mutilations. We are also locked up with our dreams and our visions and with the knowledge that if we only had the keys, if we only are, if we can only seize them from the keepers. If we can only seize them from the keepers from the standard oils, the General Motors, and all the giant corporations, and for course, the protectors, the government. If we can only get our hands on those keys, we could transform these visions and these dreams into reality. Our situation, bears a very excruciated similarity to the situations of the prisoners. And we must never forget this. For if we do, we will lose our own desire for freedom and our will to struggle for liberation. Listen to the moment of George Jackson 
Jackson description of life in Soledad prison owing. This place destroys the logical process of the mind. A man's thoughts become very disorganized. The noise, the madness, streaming from every throat, frustrated sounds from the bars, metallic sounds from the walls, the steel trays, the iron beds bolted into the wall, the hollow sounds from a castic iron sound, a toilet, the smell, the human waste throwing at us, unwashed bodies, the rotten food. Reef is so distant that it is very easy to lose hope. And the guards with the carbines and their sticks and their tear gas are those to preserve this terror, to preserve it at any cost. The terror of life in prison. The socio-political function of prisoners today is about a self-perpetuating system of a terror. For prisons are political weapons. They function as a meaning of containing elements in this society, which strengthens the stability of the larger system. In prisons, people who are actually or potentially disrupted of a status quad are confirmed, contained, and punished. And in some cases, they are forced under logical, psychological treatment. By mid altering drugs, this is happening. The prison system is a weapon of repression. The government views black and brown people as actually our most rebellious elements in our society. And thus, the jails and the prisons of this society are overflowing with young people of color Anyone who has seen the streets of ghettos can already understand how easy a sister or brother can fall victim uh, to the police who are always there in en masse. 10,000 prisoners have never been convicted of any crime, they are simply there, victims. They're under the control of intensive, incorporated, and often lapsistic racist public defenders who insist they plead guilty, even though they know their client is just as innocent as they are. And for those who have committed a crime, we have to seek out the root cause. And we seek this cause in them as individuals, but in the capital system that produces the need for crime in the first place. And as we can see, Angela Davis talks during this speech is the gates of freedom of how colored people are the ones who mainly are in jail and prisoners. They are the ones who overpopulate these based on the government and how we have been attacked since the early century. Angela Davis did this speech national wide 
in Los Angeles to prove her point. And there is also a video that Angela Davis once showed someone about how the population of of the prison is made and that is about like 90% people of color. So this is a reason why this speech very much stood out to me and I felt very connected to it.